What's going on, family? Yes, once again, we are about to embark on a straight word Bible study series. And remember, we are talking about the cycle of perversion. So we went through the cycle and we're going to see how this cycle wraps up. How do we know we're coming to the end of that cycle? What signs will we see? What is the evidence? So get your pen, get your pad, get your Bibles, and let's get ready to jump right into it right now. I am his humble servant, and once again, this is Straight Word, the Bible study series where we get straight into the Word to see how it applies to our daily lives, keeping it current and keeping everything as far as what we're seeing today. So we're continuing our cycle of perversion series. We talked about how it starts off with pride. We talked about some of the signs we see. We talked about how to get out of that cycle or what it looks like if we progress in that cycle. So how do we know we're coming to the end of that cycle? What does the pride do to you? What is the evidence that you are in the cycle of perversion? That could be an individual. That could be a group of people. That could be a uh, uh, a organization or a church structure but they all go through the same sign so let's turn to the scripture and let's see what happens in that cycle first we're going to look at Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 11 turn with me it says because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil okay so let's break this down what is this telling us we've already discussed what pride is and how it affects your heart we've even looked at examples of, of seeing how pride has set in and taken over the hearts of men in cities like Sodom and Gomorrah and even cities like Nineveh so we've seen how that cycle begins. So what happens once pride sets in? We've discussed how pride allows you to think that you are a better authority of decision making than thus where your instructions come from. For example, when Eve was instructed by Adam that God told them not to eat of the fruit of the tree of life, or excuse me, not to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, when she was approached by the serpent and he told her, you know, that is good for food and it's good to make you wise. Her pride is what set in to think that she now had a better understanding and, and judgment of whether or not to eat the fruit. So relating that to what we see here in our scripture in Ecclesiastes he's chapter 8, we can understand what that pride does if it sets in your heart and it begins to work on your heart over a period of time. As you see, it says there that because the sentence of evil did not happen immediately, the heart of men seek to do more evil. And we can see this in our everyday lives if you really look at examples in life. One example could be a person who has adopted a life of crime. When you do the crime the first time, you may be nervous, you may be scared, you may be looking around and anxious because you might think you're going to get caught. But the more and more you continue to do crime, the more comfortable you get with doing it, the more you feel at ease doing that thing. The more you feel like, you know what, I'm good at this, I'm not going to get caught. So that's what pride does. It begins to make you comfortable. So let's think in terms of our example cities. Those who were living in Sodom and Gomorrah became so comfortable in their sin and the practices that they adopted that when the angels came into the city to observe them, 
they were public with their sin. They weren't trying to hide it. There were children out there who understood how the city got down. It was crazy. Everybody understood and nobody was trying to hide the fact of their sin because sin over time and that pride over time weighs on your heart and makes you comfortable and makes you complacent in what you're doing. Check this out with me. Let's check out another scripture. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3 and we're going to look at verses 3 and verse 4. There it reads, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Check this out. This is deep now. This is telling us not only does pride work on our hearts and, and it's been doing so since biblical times and it's currently doing so now in the same cycle that we are studying. But this verse is telling us that in the end time, that same cycle is going to be in existence. And that very same cycle is going to be how many will be deceived. Because they have gotten comfortable with life the way it is, they have gotten comfortable with doing things their own way without seeing any type of repercussions. Now they feel like there are no repercussions. That's what pride does to you. Because judgment may not come immediately, as we spoke of in our You Reap What You Sow series, a seed plants, but it takes a season before the harvest comes. In the midst of that season, some get comfortable, some get complacent in doing things that is not going to bring them the right fruit. Your pride will allow you to think that you can do those things that are not going to bring the right fruit and still have those right fruit when harvest time comes. And that's just not true. So what should we do? And we kind of talked about it. We touched on it in this series already, but let's go over it again so we can make sure people are clear. What should we do if we see the signs of this cycle of perversion? The perversion may start off small, but it has a, a appetite that is never fulfilled. That pride will never be fulfilled. Greed will never be fulfilled. You will always want more. You will always want to try more and get away with more. Until you get to the point where you have to pay the cost. So what should we do if we see those signs? Repent. Repent. Now that we understand how the cycle of perversion works, we can better understand what it actually means to repent. Let's take a look at one more scripture and we'll break it down and it'll help us understand how to repent when we see ourselves in a cycle such as what we've been discussing. Turn with me to one that we are very familiar with. That's going to be 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And it says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will hear their land, heal their land. So what I want to take a look at as we observe this scripture, which we have studied before, but this time I want us to pay attention to the order of operations. Let's look at the order of things that are presented in this scripture. So it says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. What does humbling yourself do? Humbling yourself is reversing the act of allowing pride to affect your heart. You can't be humble and proud at the same time. To humble yourself and say, you know what, maybe I don't know what's best for me. Maybe God does know what's best. Maybe I should do what he has instructed me to do. So the first step is reversing the first step in the cycle of 
perversion, removing the pride from your heart. Then we see, of course, it says, seek my face and turn from your wicked ways. So what is true repentance? Turning from your, your ways, turning from your wicked, wicked ways, not continuing to do the same thing that you have been doing. To repent is like making a U-turn, like you see on my shirt. You cannot continue to walk in your sin and, and think yourself repentant. Then after you do these things, what is the promise? The scripture says, then God will hear from, hear from heaven and he will forgive your sins. Your pride led you to a path of sin. Once you humble yourself, you get rid of the pride. The pride led you to the sin, but once you have humbled yourself and repented, guess what? God will take away the sin. Then healing comes. So it's important that we see the order of how things work. We see the cycle of how to get into perversion and how that affects our lives. Now we're seeing the cycle of how to get out of that and the process and the steps and the right order to do so in. Man, I'm definitely glad that we could have this discussion because this series is really going to help us as we look and start to apply the word to our lives and see how it can be addressed to things we're going through in today's time. What I want to discuss with you, family, is I feel in my spirit, I've been feeling that uh, we may want to get a little more personal in our straight word series. So from here on out, for a period of time, we're going to change our format a little bit. We have done a lot of series which have presented foundational information. So now I think we're going to make it a little more personal and make it a little more, um, a little more relative to what's going on as we speak. So how are we going to do that? We won't be doing series for a while. We're going to focus on single episodes that can really touch on the things we deal with in our lives. Now, of course, the series will still be uh, available to you, and I'll provide the link where you can find every episode in every series. But we will start to do single episodes where we can really hone in on specific topics. Now, I'm going to need your help with this, so help me out. I want to hear what kind of topics do we want to go over. So if you want to get involved and get interactive, drop in the comments what type of topics you want to go over so we can keep this thing relative to what we deal with in this day and time. I thank you for your cooperation and I think it's going to take a good uh, turn in the direction that we're going in now that we have a good foundation. Well, let us pray real quickly. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to continue our study. We thank you for how the Holy Spirit has been leading and guiding us through our study and showing us things that we may not have gotten from the word uh, previously. We thank you for how your, your word is living and is always giving us a lesson that's fit for the time. We thank you for taking us through the Cycle of Perversion series and showing us how pride leads us down the pathway of sin. But more importantly, showing us how to stop that cycle in our lives and how to turn away from our pride and turn away from our sinful lives. Please allow us to apply this information. Apply it as individuals. Apply it as groups. Apply it as churches. Apply it as a nation. Apply it as the world that we live in. Thank you for letting us be a light that shines to other men. That you get the glory and honor and not us ourselves. These things we ask and pray in Yahshua's precious name. Thank you, Father. It is done. Great, great. So I'm glad we could wrap up our Cycle of Perversion series. And let's get into it. Let's start to get interactive right now. Go ahead and get in the comments and let's see what topics we want to start touching on. Some of our videos may be shorter now that we're focusing on a specific topic. Some may still be similar to the length of what we've been going on in our series. 
but we'll also be able to drop them at different times. So we've been on a weekly schedule now, but we may change our schedule up and drop a few a week or maybe every other day or just depending on what topics we we feel like we want to discuss and what you guys drop in the chat. So I look forward to that. And until next time, always remember, study the word for yourself so you can get the straight word with no chase.